Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 40. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book and we are in chapter 6. We're still talking about pivot tables, the amazing pivot tables. And in this video I want to see grouping dates in a pivot table. Absolutely one of the coolest tricks that allows us to create things like a yearly summary report, monthly summary report, or weekly summary report from a huge transactional data set in just a few clicks. Let's go over to our Excel workbook. There's the Excel is fun start file we're working from. You can download it by clicking on the link below the video or get it from the DVD. We're going to start on the sheet PT data 2. And here it is. Most uh, or many data sets have transactional records like this. And there it is. For each individual transaction it has the date. But all we want is we want to see a monthly report uh, for each region. So for West we want to see uh, January, February, March, April, etc. Now we could do that with formulas, but it would be real hard. Pivot table, totally easy. Now as we said in the last video, the key to pivot tables is visualizing what you want up front. So over on this sheet, all I want is my months down the side and then the regions along the top. These will be our row headers and these will be our column headers. The intersecting cell will add with two criteria, the region and the month. Now of course the problem is these are serial numbers as we've, as we've talked about many times in the book so far. These represent the number of days since December 31st, 1899. So we have to get months from that. Now earlier in the book we talked about how to do it a, a few different ways with formulas. But no way, pivot tables just blow formulas away in terms of how fast you can create this report. All right, you ready? We're going to create a pivot table from insert pivot table, pivot table. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt NVT. Now that keyboard shortcut is going to become really important in just a moment. Alt NVT opens the one step wizard. That is a keyboard shortcut Alt. That N is represents the insert ribbon in 2007 and 10 and then N whoops Alt NVT. That keyboard shortcut is associated with Excel 2007 and 10. Our, our second example in this video will actually learn a different keyboard shortcut. All right, so we have our data set. There's our new worksheet. I'm going to click OK. Now watch this. How easy is this? You simply drag the date to the row labels. Now right now, we could drag sales. Actually, this alone is cool in terms of what it can do. This is a daily report. So each one of these cells is simply all the sales added for a particular day. That's hard to do with formulas, but with a pivot table, totally easy. But we want to stay, take this one step further. We're not interested in a daily sales report. We want a monthly. All we got to do is click in the pivot table where the date is. You could also go up to pivot tables options right there, grouping. but I like to right click and group. It's this easy. Months. Now you got to be careful. It's pretty good. It, it looks through the date column and finds the first and last date. We can see that all of these transactions are in the year 2011. But I always like to be uh, extra careful and do months and years. Whatever you do, Make sure that if there's more than one year, you got to select year or all the Januaries from all the years will be grouped together. All right, I'm going to click OK and it actually, over here you can take note when I click OK, it adds a years and then the date is the month. Now right now that's pretty amazing. Again, you'd have to get pretty fancy with your formulas to summarize like that. I'm going to go ahead and put region over in the columns. So that's uh, shaping up. I want to go up to Design, Layout, and Show in Tabular because I want the field names, years, and region to show. Uh, I'm going to go up to Formatting. I'm going to use the same format I've done so far, that one. I'm going to highlight both cells using Control, go up to the Home, and get some light blue. I'm going to click right there, do some dark blue. I'm going to uh, click here and right click, value field settings, and I'm going to go to number. 
currency. Remember, this is the way we should be doing it, not formatting the individual cells, because if it pivots, it's the cells that have the formatting, not this method that actually formats the actual field. Click OK. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go over and compare. We got East January 38,000. We got a total of 96. Let's go over here. All right, so this is how we did it with formulas. And here, let's just take a look. We did learn in the array formula section in the video on custom number formatting exactly how to do this formula. This is a lot harder to do. Same report as this sheet. Pivot tables, absolutely rule. Now I'm going to immediately come down here and call this um, PT2. Enter. Oh, so I'm going to say uh, PT and then in parentheses 2. Field name, field list went away. I'm going to click in here. OK, but what we want to compare and contrast for a moment. Pivot tables here formulas. Is there any situation where you'd ever want to do formulas if it's so hard to do? Yes, and here's uh, one reason to use formulas over pivot tables. If you go back to your data set, if your data is actually changing, and some people have tables where they're, they're always changing the inputs. So if I go to quad west and I change this just a huge number, I'm going to change it to 50, 500,000, all right? 500,000. If I go over to my formula sheet, uh, oh, that wasn't uh, one of the, oh, there it is right there. I have January West. I thought I was doing quad. But there it is. Formulas immediately update. So if you have a data set where data is changing regularly, form people really then, s some people insist. They say, there's no way I'm going to refresh that pivot table every single time. I like the immediacy of formulas. But now let's go look at our pivot table. So West, January. January, West. No, it's not updated. It is super easy to update. All you got to do is go to Options, Refresh, or right click Refresh. And instantly it updates. That data is stored in a cache in memory. And it's stored there. And it's not looking at it's not refreshing data all the time unless you refresh. So, but we can see how quick and easy this is and uh, compared to formulas. Now, I want to do a second pivot table. This was grouping by months. We can actually uh, take away this year simply by coming over here and collapsing that. I actually want to add some uh, formatting to that date. Now that's the copy the formatting and boop. Now, what happens if I add the date back? Here's a problem with, uh, I mean, the year back. If sometimes people just come over and click, it just kind of adds it wherever <laughs> it wants to. Now, it's easy enough to change that we would drag it up above row labels here, no problem. But unchecking and checking can sometimes get you in trouble. So if you want it back, you just drag it to there. Now, yearly report, we didn't have any years. But obviously, if you had multiple years, you could just do group by year, and when we took away the date, it would just show us all the years. Finally, I want to show you how to do a weekly report. I'm going to come back over to our data set. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can add a new pivot table on a new sheet. I'm going to do Alt-NVT. Click New Sheet, click OK. Now, I'm going to notice that the date and the years are already here. So if I like drag this down to the rows, no way it's grouped from that last report. There's a single set of data being stored in memory. And it's remembering it. So one grouping affects other subsequent pivot tables. So I'm going to delete this sheet. Right click, delete. And this is where knowing the keyboard shortcut from an earlier version can come in handy. It's Alt, D for data, and P for pivot table. Alt DP. And by the way, this, this is another one of these tricks that's not in the book. This opens up the three step wizard. And here we can get to st saving a second cache of data. Excel list, yeah, pivot table. I'm going to click next. That says where the data is. Next. And here's the message Your report will use less memory if you base it on existing report. 
Um, do you want your report to be based on the same data as your existing report? I'm going to say no. And then the third step is new worksheet. Notice one, two, three steps. They combined it all into one nice compact uh, dialog box in 2007-10. I'm going to click Finish. And now we're allowed to group. I'm going to come over here. Now when you're doing weeks, the absolute most important thing is you have to look through your data set and figure out what is the starting Monday or whatever day it is you want your data set to uh, your, your weekly data set to, to start with. So I'm going to right click group and I'm going to say days not months so I unclick months and I go to days and I'm going to say group 7 and very carefully I'm going to come up here I've already looked through the data set and the first Monday is the 3rd January 3rd 2011 and then I click OK and it has a little extra category up there it says less than that date all right, and then you can click Sales, and there you have it, just like that. Right click, Value Field Settings, I'm going to say Number Format, Currency, click OK, click OK. So that's an exa that was an example that's not in the uh, book. I'm going to say Pivot Table Weekly. All right, um, when we come back in our next Pivot Table video, we're going to see trouble. What happens if we have blanks in our sets and what happens if we have uh, text in the date field. Alright, we'll see you next video.